Hi folks, it's Owen from Far Far Out of Dork. I'll do another battle report. So this is the same game layout that I had last time. Uh, so the basic situation is we're probably the early morning of the 19th of September. Um, the paratroopers have been holding out for a day and a half at least at this stage. And you can see them dug in in the corner here. And they're protecting a landing zone uh, near Volpeza um, as part of market op uh, Operation Market Garden. And the Germans are going to attack this position. So the starting force for the Germans is a Stug 3, a sniper team, some forward observer and an MG team. And the basic plan is to bring down artillery on this position. MGs and other infantry will work their way along this hedge line here to get a position to hopefully be able to assault across that field. At the same time, the main force, which will be more Stugs, more mounted infantry, are going to make their way along this road. And again, try and get a position to attack down here. One of the most threatening elements down there is the um, six pounder. There's also a heavy machine gun and there are some reserves that aren't visible there. So at the start of the game I had to draw a chit for each side. So the Germans drew it three because the paratroopers are already in possession of that objective there just in front of the building. And the paratroopers drew a two because they are outscouted. Okay so let's see how things go, see if the Germans can root these stubborn paratroopers out. After turn one for both sides, and we see the situation here, the Germans have pushed up, so the MG team up through the trees, the other two teams moving in towards that building to get some decent views over the enemy. The Stug has broken down, so this occurred because the paratroopers ended up with some pinned teams following the preliminary bombardment. At the end of their turn, they drew a chit, and that's what they drew. So it's immobilized there, um, which isn't a bad place. It's, it's probably gonna just try and put as much fire into that building as possible. Uh, so the folks in there may not want to hang around. It's one of the interesting things you, you read about war is that you know, buildings look like great places to be, um, but they're so visible, so easy to put HE shells in and cause trouble. Uh, I think during this game I'm going to try the rule proposed on the uh, Facebook group for Battle Group, which is to have a minus one to cover saves for HE shells as they land in, in buildings. So the situation over this side is the paratroopers have just put on a bit of ambush fire. Uh, I could only really get on a couple of teams because everyone else was pinned during the turn. Okay, let's play out another turn and see how things go. So, with turn two, the Germans moved up and took some pinning shots where they could. So, first up, the uh, MG team started to move down here towards that hedge. They won't be too hasty in getting in position there. They don't want to be there all by themselves. Um, the Sniper team uh, moved into the building, took a shot, uh, but dug in paratroopers, but didn't manage to do anything. The forward observer team moved in there, getting ready to observe next turn. The Stug put a couple of pinning shots towards the building, um, but the cover protected the uh, observation team that's inside. On your side of things, uh, basically everyone who could go on to ambush uh, did, and uh, they're just getting ready for the inevitable arrival of the Germans. So on turn three, the Germans start to get some reserves. Fortunately, rolled very poorly, and just a single stug came on, but moved at full speed up the road just to try and get a view into those paratroopers for subsequent turns. The sniper took a shot, actually hit, and despite these folks counting as being the open, managed to roll a six and, and uh, survived. The observer, though, um, did really well. <laughs> brought the 105 mil down, it landed almost directly on top of the uh, HMG here, uh, but managed miraculously not to do any damage to it. There was a pinning hit went into the uh, HQ for the platoon, um, but <laughs> they got really unlucky and uh, a man was killed uh, as part of that and subsequently they ran away. They just had a really bad morale roll. So that, that really has changed the kind of complexion thing. Their, their job was going to be to bring down artillery as the Germans approached. Uh, but for the moment, there's nobody who can do that until turn five when the forward reserve might arrive. So let's see how things fare for the Germans, see if they can get enough reserves in to start pushing aggressively towards this defended position. On turn four, the Germans got some more reserves. So that's a fully loaded half track, so it has a team of rifles and an MG team in it. Uh, the Stug moved up, tried to shoot the paratroopers who had been dug in here, 
Uh, but on the paratroopers turn, they decided to push up towards the tank, maybe hoping to get an assault off. So a pretty ballsy move, if I might say so. Um, but let's see if it pans out, just, just while the German support is relatively low. Over this side, uh, again, the paratroopers pushed out, hoping that you know, they would get close enough to assault these guys, but at the same time then grabbing that objective. Uh, the Germans pulled a Beyond the Call of Duty uh, chit, um, which I played on this team, hoping to pull them back, uh, but they failed their experience test. Over here, the snipers had shot at those paratroopers before they moved out, uh, didn't manage anything. Called in the 105s again, um, and uh, actually nothing much happened. They, they, it was fairly accurate, but just uh, caused potential pinning hits on both the M HMG and the six pounder, uh, but their dug-in status really helped them out there. So let's see what the Germans do and see if this is really as foolhardy as it looks. So turn five has been interesting. The Stug pushed up. Um, the Germans didn't have a huge number of orders. Uh, it managed to get a pinning hit onto the paratroopers that were there, but they miraculously saved it on the six. And this isn't the first miracle these guys had. So as you can see, they've had a rather successful turn. The artillery uh, proved uh, ineffective again uh, for the Germans. Uh, so they're kind of in a, in a slightly iffy situation. Um, the half-track moved up here and the MG team backed away, uh, fearing what these paratroopers would do. So they had been a little bit back in the field, but they moved up to the hedgerow. They subsequently tried to pin the MG team, but failed to, to do that. So some reserves came in for the British. So this is a new section. They've moved in and actually occupied the foxholes there. The... Uh, forward HQ came in, uh, forward observer, mortar. But the crazy action that happened here was with these guys. So the Germans did call in a bit of artillery. It did have a good chance of pinning these, scored a pinning hit. And yet again, they, they saved it. Um, but that was just the start of their run of dice, really, for these guys. They passed their motivation to attempt to close assault on the tank, uh, moved up, <laughs> rolled a five, which means a hit on the side armor. And it hit successfully and brewed up the tank there. They're kind of in a strange situation, certainly had that stug been active, but that little black bead means that it is pinned, and that was caused by some uh, three inch mortar fire. So the Fort HQ um, called it in, which I now realize they probably shouldn't have, or we'll run with it. Um, it was wildly inaccurate, it ended up landing up over here in the field, uh, caused pinning hits to be rolled for both the half track and the stug um, but did funnily enough on a six manage to pin the stug despite being a very light weapon so things are interesting here um, I'll have to measure up but I think that objective marker there is probably secured by these guys I don't think the stug or the half track are going to be close enough so that's going to be another chit for the Germans to draw so let's see what happens as we roll into turn six So before I go into turn six, I think I'll talk quickly about the battle rating for the two forces. So the British have a, a basic battle rating of 24, um, actually 25, sorry, and they rolled a five for Wal Muhammad, so that brings them up to a 30 total. Uh, they've only taken two against that, which is the kind of chit in the corner there, um, having also drawn the breakdown for the Stug. Uh, the Germans are on 33 starting, and they've taken uh, 10 in total including the Beyond the Call of Duty, which didn't do anything additional there. Um, so that's the current situation. Uh, it's going to go into German turn six next, and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so turn six, a bit of a mixed bag for the Germans, uh, mostly negative. <laughs> so uh, starting over here, the MG team on the bottom right there tried to pin the guys behind the hedge in the anticipation that the rifle team and the Hannah Mag would hop out and try and assault them. Uh, but they failed miserably, uh, didn't get a pinning hit on them at all. And uh, that left it to the Hannah Mag actually, rather than letting out its occupants to put the MGs into to pin them. So it did actually pin the paratroopers uh, in place there. And actually that reminds me at the end of the British turn, I should have drawn a chit to unpin them. So I'll do that in a minute. Moving over here. 
it looks like the paratroopers have disappeared, but actually they've just managed to fall back. So they did get pinned. Um, this uh, Stug, which isn't going anywhere, managed to get a pinning hit on them. The front Hannah Mag let out both its MG team and its rifle team, uh, but neither of them passed their experience tests in attempt to a close assault that pinned uh, unit. The other two Hannah Mags here are uh, another one that has the same occupants, and then the um, HQ for the platoon. On the British turn, uh, the Fort HQ used tactical coordination to unpin these guys and get them moving. They, they passed their experience test, no problem. Uh, dropped a bit of artillery, um, but it was ineffective. The couple of three-inch mortars that are off board landed, well, were due to land here, but actually drifted all the way off the edge of the board here. Um, a single two-inch or three-inch mortar uh, landed just at that point there with the dices. Um, there was a pinning attempt on uh, these guys here, but it failed. So uh, very little happened. Uh, some units went on to um, ambush fire, and we can see there's a, a Piat team hidden up behind the woods here. So um, not a whole lot of action. Uh, equally, the German artillery was uh, ineffective. They failed to make communication with them. And the sniper just missed everything on, on the German turn. So not a whole lot happened, but the, the British again are in, in pretty good shape. Okay, so this is turn seven for the Germans. Uh, so their reinforcements arrived, um, the last of them. So this is the uh, HQ, overall the Ford HQ. And then a supply truck arrived up there just to help resupply there. Uh, the artillery uh, failed to make contact again but quite a bit of movement up over here um first things first when the mg teams ran out uh, triggered fire from the hmg down the road uh, which managed to kill a man and pin that small team um, but the, everyone else kind of just started moving so whether they were in transports moving up getting dropped out of their transports and then moving up to the germans making quite aggressive movement down here and see the pi team they're gonna have to fall back they weren't quite cl close enough to assault uh, but they're going to have to bug out of there. Uh, so Germans trying to make the most of moving down this side of, of the board uh, while the, the paratroopers are kind of concentrated in this field a bit. So let's see when we get to the British turn seven what they attempt to do. And just a quick addition to what the Germans got up to. So a very similar situation down this corner. Uh, those British paratroopers had been unpinned in their own turn. Uh, the MG again completely failed to pin them. So it was left to the Hannah Mag to attempt it. Uh, was successful and the bit of soft cover there wasn't enough to stop them being pinned. So not great for the British either. Unfortunately they only rolled five orders in total. Uh, so with those five orders what I did was to pull these guys across from the field back into their foxholes in the anticipation of a bit of German attacking coming in. Uh, pulled back the Piat team, uh, pulled back some forward observers uh, and then put both the six pounder and the HMG back onto ambush fire. So uh, a bit of a tricky situation here. Hopefully the good hard cover that they're in there with the foxholes will, will help these guys weather the storm. Um, we're, we're about to see a bit of uh, German action if they do roll enough orders to try and mount an attack here. So, so let's see how things go. So turn eight for the Germans, we, we'll start in this corner. Uh, this. MG in the bottom right was much more successful this time. They managed to get a pinning hit uh, on the paratroopers, actually killing a man. Um, they failed then to spot them for some aimed fire. The Hannah Mag dropped out its occupants. They made their experience test. They moved forward. Uh, they only rolled two for their hand grenade and for the hand grenades. Um, so managed to kill another two paratroopers and the paratroopers were solid in their morale. So. They're there, they didn't obviously fight back being pinned, but uh, if they managed to unpin with tactical coordination, those Germans could be in a little bit of trouble there. Over this side, things didn't quite go successfully, it wasn't terrible, but we'll see what the British response is. So MG team pushed up into the woods there, tried to pin the guys in the foxholes, failed. Uh, this MG pulled back out of sight, they were just in a dangerous position. Um, the Stug just here in the field, attempted to pin those guys, again failed, and at that point there's nobody else really to throw pinning hits down on them, so everyone else just kind of maneuvered up around here, threatening this side of the wood. Um, these guys got hit by the HMG as they tried to go out there with some pinning fire, so they got stuck there. 
So um, not great, uh, all told. The again comms were failed to bring in the artillery, uh, but the Germans starting to get close in with the British. It's hard to know if much more artillery will get called in, uh, so we'll have to wait and see. So let's see what the British response is. So the British only managed to get six orders, but despite that, managed to do some good work. This team had been pinned, but I used tactical coordination, um, then got them to do uh, an assault. There were two orders and they wiped out the rifle team that were opposite them. So not a, a bad situation now for them over, over here. So that was two of the orders. Then the HMG opened up. It managed to pin the small uh, MG team that was just here. Um, put some shots out at these guys, but didn't manage to hit anything. So three orders. Fourth order was to have these guys close to start the MG team that was now pinned. Uh, and taking it out. and They're in the woods, which is not a terrible place to be. The PF team, which had been up behind the hedge, hopped into the building and there was a two inch mortar just here and they, they've hopped back just to get out of assault range from, from those Germans. So um, the Germans are sitting on 18. Uh, they also managed in that turn to draw the air power, which you might just be able to see there. So an airstrike. So that may come in at the start of their next turn. Um, so and the British are sitting on 15. So reasonably even at the moment, um, the German position is not optimum they're certain that these big threats back here aren't being attacked at and you know the stug the one that's operational there and can move be very reluctant to, to make its way um, around that corner so let's see what happens in the german turn nine so on german turn nine it was their turn to roll poorly for orders they only managed to get six total as well uh, so things were getting a little bit too hot down in this corner so the MG team moved up. Uh, they were then mounted up into the Hannah Mag, which uh, moved along just to get out of assault range from these guys. Over this side of things, uh, this uh, British section really do have a charmed life. They had uh, initially a rifle team trying to pin them. They were unsuccessful. Then an MG team, they were unsuccessful. Eventually the Hannah Mag, uh, or sorry, the Stug, managed to pin them at range. Uh, but then the other small rifle team they're in behind there failed their experience test to try and assault them. Uh, that was it. So very few orders for the Germans, uh, very little happened. Uh, so let's see if, if the British can kind of, you know, maybe consolidate back a little bit, uh, get into a firm position again and start to mop up uh, some of the German troops. And just as an addendum to that, uh, the airplane unfortunately didn't arrive. So. Turn nine for the British was pretty successful. They had seven orders and they made very good use of them. So this uh, section here started to push up towards that village if it could cause a little bit of mischief. The team that was here, uh, they close assaulted some pinned Germans over beside that destroyed um, Panzer IV from a previous battle uh, and they were very successful in it. To do that, they had to take a tactical coordination. I drew a chit and I managed to get uh, an airplane for these guys, so see if it arrives for them uh, on next turn. So uh, other things that happened, you know, going back on um, ambush fire, the section that had been dug in here have started to move up this way just to make sure we're mopping up any Germans that are, are coming in. So the German losses have been steady, uh, but the big loss this turn was uh, the Fort HQ calling in a bit of artillery, so the, the three inch mortars, <laughs> really successful landing point landed right here. Had a few pinning rolls, nothing successful there, um, but one of the mortars seemed to have found a weak spot on the top of that um, stug that had been previously broken down and it was destroyed. So the Germans are on 23 of their 33 um, battle ratings, so you know, they're, they're starting to, to really feel it now. Um, there isn't a whole lot left in terms of infantry and capability to really attack this, this British position, which is really intact. Like they've, they've lost a few men out of here, but otherwise, all of their sections are in really good order. So let's see how things go for the Germans, but they're on a bit of a slippy slope. The British have a total there of, uh, doing slow maths in my head, 15, sorry, 15. So they're about halfway through their battle rating. Uh, the Germans are a little bit further along than that. Uh, so let's see how things go. So German turn 10 has been pretty eventful. A lot of vehicles here tried to pin the paratroopers, so the paratroopers were just in this area here. Uh, so uh, everyone just 
failing to pin them and then eventually they did get pinned so these Germans decided that they would assault them killed a number and on the morale check they got to be on the call of duty uh, roll of a six uh, and they then proceeded to go and attack a small team of Germans which were just there uh, wiping them out uh, they took some damage in return because those Germans weren't pinned um, but an unbelievable turn of events. Uh, I thought the, the Germans back there, if they could pin them, could really you know, just take them out. The artillery was called in fairly successfully, um, managed to pin the HMG. Then these guys had to take a pinning check, rolled a six, and it was just the number of sixes the British have rolled this turn are, have been insane, particularly for anything to do with in the open kind of infantry saves or, or morale. It, it was just nuts. Um, this half track popped out the MG team, so these, this was the MG team that was down this way earlier, uh, and they've gone on to ambush fire, kind of anticipating these guys coming up. And the sniper failed to do anything, and the supply truck just moved up to the back of that stug. It's running low on ammo, and so it might need to resupply. So let's see how the, the British fare in their turn 10. And uh, British turn 10, and the game is over. Uh, so one of the first things I did was to call in the mortars again over here and they proved ridiculously accurate uh, and you can see that building is now empty it killed off the two teams in there one was a sniper team so I didn't have to draw a battle counter for them but drew one for the forward observers me of course I mean playing the game uh, I know what the, the amount of damage the, the German force has taken so you know and this is the, the challenge with a solo game I decided then I would have the paratroopers that were in this wood assault the Germans who were behind it. And as you can see, both got wiped out. So at the end of things, the Germans had an overall battle rating of 33. And that is 34, count up there, so they've exceeded and lost the battle. Uh, the British, uh, whose airplane did not arrive, um, have finished on 20 total. So, good game, good fun. Uh, this is a really, really tough nut to crack. For the Germans. Um, they've had two attempts. Uh, now that said the British failed to take the town earlier when I gave that a, a go. So uh, I think I'll change up the terrain, keep a similar kind of context and uh, see how they fare in a maybe more open battle. Um, maybe a little bit less uh, terrain. Certainly not this kind of really strong defended corner. You know, it's really hard to figure out what the approaches are for the Germans. If they were to approach across this field you've got the uh, six pounder and the HMG if they come down the road the same kind of things facing them down So a really kind of tough situation for them to try and mount an attack on um, their artillery never really kicked in um, You know, they managed to pin things here and there, but nothing substantial uh, And that I think was was certainly telling the, the British could kind of hold back and were never really under pressure to have to draw battle counters to unpin things and whenever they did it was often with kind of the um, the tactical side of things uh, where they're just unpinning during the turn to get somebody moving and assaulting and you know there's some fairly gutsy moves from the British and um, the guys who were eventually wiped out there they, they did an awful lot of fighting um, and everyone else moved up and back in, in different positions to, to make attacks so all told really fun game and I have to say I really enjoy the battle group it's a lovely rule set uh, feels like a, a nice kind of historic the, the artillery makes sense and uh, the, you know, the area fire and the suppressing fire all makes sense. Uh, I think the morale mechanisms are quite nice. Really enjoyable. Uh, in this game, I used a rule that was suggested on the, the Facebook group by some of the designers, which was to reduce the uh, save um, when you're hit directly with HG. Uh, and, you know, it made a small impact. There wasn't a huge amount of direct HG fire being shot in. There's a lot of indirect HG coming in. Um, but, you know, it's a good game. So um, until next time, take care and thanks for watching.